Hi, I'm Yorgos. I'm a PhD student at Imperial College, and today I'm going to present a recent work on graph neural network recursivity. This is joint work with Fabrizio Frasca, Stefano Zafiriu, and Michael Bronstein. Machine learning on graphs has attracted a lot of attention in recent years. Probably the reason for this is that there are numerous different applications where these methods can be applied to, for example, molecules, social networks, and 3D meshes. The main challenge when dealing with graph structured data is the notion of graph isomorphism. In particular, contrary to Euclidean data, such as images or text, we can represent the same graph in multiple equivalent ways by changing the way that we order the nodes. Thus, graph neural networks should be by construction invariant to the way that we order the nodes. This means that they should extract the same representation regardless of the node ordering. This means that they are invariant to graph isomorphism. Typically, in order to address this issue, graph neural networks are based on a property called local permutation invariance. In particular, each node collects information from its neighbors, hence the locality, and then aggregates it in a permutation invariant way. Here I show uh, a generic uh, message passing neural network algorithm where each message is transformed by a learnable function m and then aggregated through a summation operator which guarantees the permutation invariance. Then the nodes hidden representations are updated by another learnable function. However, local permutation invariance is not always desired. For example, in proteins, nodes uh, have a clear ordering since they are an amino acid sequence, or in geometric graphs, nodes should be treated differently based on their position in their underlying geometric space. Now the question that naturally arises is if local permutation invariance can guarantee enough expressivity for arbitrary graphs. It has been shown in a series of recent works that the answer to this question is no. And the most important consequence is that MPNNs cannot capture important topological properties. In the example I show here, MPNNs will think that these two graphs are isomorphic, although they are clearly non-isomorphic. And the reason, for example, is that the graph on the right has two triangles, while the graph on the left has none. Thus, MPNNs cannot, for example, count triangles. Otherwise, they would be able to disambiguate these two graphs. How important is structure for downstream tasks, though? Domain evidence shows that uh, uh, in most of the uh, application domains, structure is uh, strongly correlated with the task at hand. For example, in social networks, triangles and clicks indicate communities, whereas in molecules, there are certain substructures called functional groups that are known to characterize uh, certain chemical properties. To this end, we propose graph substructure networks. This is a method that enhances traditional message passing with structural information that otherwise MBNNs wouldn't be able to compute by themselves. We propose two variants, one where we assign structural information or structural identifiers as we call them to vertices of the graph, and another one where we assign structural information to edges of the graph. This is akin to absolute and relative positional encodings for language modeling. Now, how do we construct the structural identifiers? Ideally, we would want nodes with the exact same topological characteristics to be assigned the same identifiers. However, in real-world networks, it is very rare to have two nodes with the exact same topology. Thus, we will have insufficient training data and our model won't be able to generalize to unseen topological characteristics. To address this issue, we resort to an approximation. Instead of looking for exact topological matching, we look for similar topologies. These are reflected to the substructures where the nodes belong to. Then we assign the same identifiers to nodes with the same uh, substructures. In detail, the algorithm is called subgraph isomorphism counting and it goes as follows. First, we collect a small set of representative subgraphs. This can be clicks, cycles, or whatever kind of substructure. Then for each one of these subgraphs, we split their nodes into orbits. Intuitively, orbits reflect different structural roles. For example, here, you can see that the endpoints of a path belong to the same orbit, or when it comes to a triangle, all the nodes belong to the same orbit. Then I look for these orbits into the graphs at hand. In the example here, 
I look for how many times a node appears as part of a triangle or as uh, the end point of a three node path or as the middle point of a three node path. Then I encode all these color count values into uh, uh, one hot encoding, for example, and then combine the values into a single vector that yields uh, the structural identifier. We can also theoretically analyze the expressive power of graphs of structured networks. Obviously, they are at least as powerful as MPNNs, since they contain them, but we can also say that they are strictly more powerful than MPNNs for the majority of the substructures. This is based on a theorem that says that uh, MPNNs cannot count substructures apart from some very trivial cases. So whenever a GSN is using substructures that do not belong to these trivial cases, then it's strictly more powerful than an MPNN. To the limit, we can also say that GSNs are universal. This is based on an old conjecture from graph theory that says that each graph can be reconstructed from its vertex deleted subgraphs. In our case, this amounts to using substructures of size equal to the size of the graph minus one. However, in practice, we see that constant substructure size is sufficient for both disambiguation of uh, hard instances of graph isomorphism and generalization in real world tasks. It's important here to note that GSN doesn't sacrifice computational complexity since it is still linear to the number of edges as traditional MPNNs. And this is in contrast with higher order GNNs that are polynomial to the number of nodes. In order to empirically validate our claims, first, we attempt to disambiguate hard instances of graph isomorphism as the one that I'm showing here. We show that GSN with certain substructures, such as cycles and paths, can achieve 0% failure. This is in contrast to traditional GNNs, even higher order GNNs, that heavily fail. We also achieve state-of-the-art results in a variety of tasks, ranging from social and biological networks to molecular property prediction. Lastly, an interesting finding is that our results are explainable. In particular, we choose the substructures based on domain evidence. For example, we use clicks for social networks and protein-protein interaction networks and cycles for molecules. In this example here, we use the cycle GSN to predict a molecular property. And as you can see, there is a steep decrease in the test error when the size of the cycles is larger than five or six. Note that these are uh, typical ring systems in organic molecular compounds. In summary, we show that structure provably increases the expressivity of GNNs. We do that without sacrificing locality and linear complexity. And we use domain evidence in order to guide our parameter choices. Thank you, and if you are interested, see you at the Q&A session.